man, I'm, I'm really itchy today. I put the lotion on, you know what I'm saying? Just lotion. Nothing else. Hello, people of the internet. Spaz here. Um, we're like the official Terraria porn channel at this point. Yeah, that's fine. Well, if the FBI comes for me, at least you guys won't have to watch these videos anymore. Anyway, I'm reading the Terraria lore today. Because I haven't read it in a long time. But of course, the lore is more than it may seem. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Welcome to the world of Terraria. A land full of mystery and wonder. With much of its destiny left up to the wildest imaginations. However, a few legends of old have passed their way into our present time, passed down by countless generations of the order by of the order of the guide. These few scraps of information will serve to help you navigate your journey and overcome threats lurking in the shadows. This knowledge is now passed on to you, the brave adventurer, with the hope that it will aid you in your quest to save the world. I don't know if I want that. You know, I'd, I'd rather not have AIDS. In the beginning, the gods established a balance to guarantee fairness for all living creatures. This balance was to be of paramount importance, with no cost too great in seeking its fulfillment. Cons have passed since the gods began testing the complexities of life in their fairness experiments. Fairness experiments. I wonder how they made their decisions on what to test. Test. In this process, countless living worlds were created and now exist within the Terraria universe. Each world of Terraria is a sentient being that knows all that goes on and can feel, feel the thoughts of all living creatures, with their sole purpose being to ensure that the desired balance is maintained. Fulfilling their desires. The world fills their, fulfills their desires. Often violently so. Oh. Violently. The worlds utilize many defense mechanisms that ensure the balance is upheld at all costs. Some of them are known as the Hallow, Corruption, and Crimson. Alright. So you just found out that each Terraria world that you create is a sentient being, fulfilling desires. Maybe that's why everybody feels so good when they play Terraria. The Crimson. The Crimson is a single emergent living being connected directly to each world, sharing a hive mind and solely focused on restoring the balance at all costs. Thousands of worlds before the one on which you stand now have been absorbed by this being. Many misguided people have made the horrific mistake of raising the Crimson to the level of a deity, conducting human sacrifices to it to bless it, the monstrosity, or seek its favor. Seeking the Crimson's favor. Yes. Crimson got a lot of tentacles on it, you know. A lot of fleshy bits, I bet it probably fulfills a, fulfills a lot of favors. The Crimson gladly consumes these bodies, becoming one with them and producing terrifying beings. All who lose the ability to feel and blindly follow the hive mind. Hmm. The Corruption. The corruption is a cancer caused by the sins of those living in the worlds of Terraria. The vile actions and thoughts present in all beings feed the growth of the corruption as it spreads relentlessly across the world. The vile actions and thoughts. <laughs> I have a lot of vile actions and thoughts that I commit. The corruption knows nothing else but to consume everything it touches, leaving behind terrible creatures of hate that exist for the sole reason to cause pain and punishment. For the unearned pleasure experienced by living things. Pleasure. After the corruption restores balance to life, it destroys it with the goal of turning the world into a desolate abyss void of life. That's how my insides feel when I lost my virgin. The hallow. The hallow, on the other hand, is, an, is of an entirely different nature. With each world is a guardian who serves as the world's master and core. Once this creature is destroyed, the world will release the ancient spirits of light and dark to expedite the process of finding a new guardian. It is here when the hallow is created and functions as an overcompensation of purity, taken to the absolute extreme. 
The Hallow Cures threats that would attempt to violate the critical balance of life, killing anything in its path as though it, it were threatening and if, treating an affection, whether friend, foe, or a neutral party. Ultimately, the Hallow serves to push back against the nev never ceasing en encroachment of control. That's what you gotta do. You gotta push back against the control, the controlling people. Find your own way. It is against the backdrop of this precious balance of life, desolation, and pain that the greatest, the great battles of legend and the adventures of our time take place. In the blind spot of the universe, there exists a planet of unprecedented potential. Your world. Your story begins with Cthulhu, a creature of immeasurable power and unknown origin, who arrived long ago with its seemingly sole purpose being to rain destruction on and to have dominion over all the sentient life that flourishes on your world. None could stand against the advances of Cthulhu. The very fabric of Terraria itself seemed on the pre precipice of doom. At last, when all hope seemed lost, the ancient race of Dryads rose to wage battle against Cthulhu. The Dryads, with their unparalleled connection to the planet. I bet they do have a good connection with the planet. For Terraria's truly last hope, as they joined together to save all life from annihilation. Annihilation from what? Exactly. Child support. I bet Cthulhu has a lot of, like, power. The Dryads were, alas, unable to kill Cthulhu. However, with the Dryads' combined power, they were able to cripple Cthulhu's ability to wreak further damage on Terraria, by ripping out Cthulhu's eyes, part of its skeleton, and chunks of its brain. Ultimately, this substantial damage forced Cthulhu to retreat to the dark side of the moon, where it dwells to this day, gathering strength for another attempt at total conquest. As for the Dryads, sadly, all but a single member perished, and the sole survivor has not been seen for many, many years. I've seen plenty of the sole survivor. Much time has passed since the Great War of Cthulhu. However, rumors tell of a lunatic cult led by a fanatical zealot that is methodically seeking to revive Cthulhu to its former power and bring about the end of the world. As part of these efforts, a renowned genius, known simply as the Mechanic, has been kidnapped and forced to rebuild the parts needed to make Cthulhu once whole again. Whole once again. Hushed whispers tell of the result of these experiments. Horrible mechanical simulacrums of Cthulhu's organs. I can do that too, you know. I can go to the store and buy, like, you know. A the Mechanic has nearly completed her work, only needing to finish the mechanical brain to restore Cthulhu to its full destructive power. Passing travelers hear construction and screams emanating from the dungeon, an evil demonic fortress of the dead in which the mechanic is supposedly held prisoner as she conducts her work. Many across the area have fallen under the possession of the cult, including the bene benevolent old man who oversees the dungeon, a once thriving city of life, until a curse forced all of its, all of its inhabitants to go mad, living beyond the point where their bodies rotted away and they became mindless undead servants of evil. Without some intervention, some forces to, to stem this tide, some hero to save the day, Terraria's doom is nigh at hand. This brings us to our adventure. It begins with you, in humble beginnings, and shown your path by the faithful and mysterious guide. As this world's champion, you will, you will experience communications from the world to help you protect your mission. The world has brought you to the specific location at this specific time. You will stand up and fight for Terraria against the growing shadows of impending doom. Or, or will you stand up for and fight for Terraria against the growing shadows of impending doom? But what's causing that shadow? I mean, it could be many things, you know. I mean, Cthulhu's a pretty big guy. He could, and like, he's packing some mad stick, you know. He packs a lot of sticks when he travels, you know. A lot of tree sticks. And that's it. That's the lore of Terraria. Of course, Terraria is a game of up, up to interpretation. So, for all we know, you know, the lore that I described could literally be canon. You never know. But there are a few things in the Terraria lore that aren't really explained. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got like this, the morning wood, right? You got many branches, you know. You can touch me with your tree branch. And you know, where does this fine lady fit in to the lore? You know. She's got a lot of mass on her, so I think she could be a heavy hitter. And multiple fights. Many different fights, you know. Like, warrior fights, or, you know. A 
Oh, good fights. And then, you know, I got this Dryad. You know? I mean, she's very one with nature, you know? She wears a few leaves around to be one with nature. Not for any other reason. And I respect that. I like that. And I got this little kid princess here. Where does she fit in? She was never mentioned in the lore. She seems important. Because she's a princess. Where are her parents, you know? What are they? Are they evil? Are they dead? Well, you know, maybe her parents aren't there because... What if they got, like, tickled by the morning wood tree, you know? Maybe that's why he's smiling. Ah, man. Um. Ah. Sorry, guys. Just got a little... Itchy in my... Yeah, I got a lot of sticks in my pants right now, you know. Well, like, maybe really just one stick, but... Yeah, you know, just... Just... A stick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, alright. Uh... Hmm. What else is there to look at? There's gotta be something else... In the lore of Terraria that we're not looking at, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the party girl, you know? The party girl? Yeah. She just has a lot of parties, you know? A lot of fun time. Have a pleasant experience with people or a person or maybe even a group of people. I don't know. She seems like she, she looks pretty bouncy, you know? Like a bouncy personality. Or just bouncy in general, you know? She got some good mass on her, too. You know, like, muscular-wise. Musclay wise. So maybe she'll be like pretty, she'll be also pretty good for battle. You know, like the zoologist, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh man, my face is really itchy, god damn. Mm. Yeah, and look, she sells like bubble. You know, that's kinda moist. Make you feel kinda good, you know. Celebration cannon. You can put some fun stuff in there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man, I'm really itchy today. My streamers, she sells streamers. You have multiple purposes for that. Like if they're elastic, you could use it for something else. You know, you could put it over like your tree stick, you know what I'm saying? Keep it from the elements. Mm -hmm. Or from like letting the nectar get on other things or in other things. Yeah. And you got, you got a stylist. She's okay, you know. I mean, she's not really big, she's kind of small, but... I mean, she looks like the kind of person who would maybe have, like, a hard time handling, like, a lot of tree nectar. Because, like, you know, maybe she'll get, like, a rash or something. Or maybe, like, you have a... Like, you know, like, you would break your nectar, right? Or, like, the tree... The, the stick bursts, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the nectar comes out, you know, it just comes out. Yeah. Comes out. You know, like maybe the, the tree stick's too big, you know, it's like, gets in, gets near her or whatever. Or maybe it hurt her because she's not really that big. But it could still be a fun time, you know. And she sells, like, a lot of hair dye. Which, you know, it could be kind of like lotion. Like a lotion-y material, because hair dye's kind of maybe a little bit thicker. So it could be, you know, it could feel really good to put in, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Alright, well, I think that's gonna end this video off today, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a really funny learning experience. Learned about the Fairy of Lore again. Haven't read it in a long time. Really gave me a new perspective on the game, you know. Really amped up my levels of why I love this game so much and why it makes me feel so good to do it. To play this game all the time. Hope you guys had a good time watching this video. I had a good time making it. I'm very, very made me feel very good to do it. And, you know... Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm really itchy today. I put that lotion on, you know what I'm saying? Just lotion. Nothing else. Alright, so, um, yeah, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. There's no reason the FBI would take me away. No, there's no reason. Bye. <laughs>